How many countries can you drive through in an electric car in 24 hours? That is what we're finding out. Okay, so right now we're in the Netherlands and 24 hours from now, if everything goes to plan, then we're hopefully gonna end this journey in Serbia. And if we do that, if we make it, then we've broken an unofficial record for traveling through the most number of countries in a single day in an electric car. Now we're doing this journey with a photographer, a videographer, we've got a support car from Porsche as well, but I'm a bit nervous about whether we're actually gonna make it or not. But you see, I've actually done all the hard work behind this project. I've mapped it all out, done all the calculations, and I'm pretty confident it's gonna go well. Yes, while I had my reservations about whether an electric car could smoothly carry out a long distance journey like this, Neil reckoned his 1200 mile route from Northern Europe down to the Balkans was foolproof. The car we were going for the record in was the Porsche Taycan. Officially, if you charge up the battery to full, then it's said to be able to cover just over 300 miles. This meant factoring in six key charging stops. We stuck to using Ionity chargers because there's a bunch of them located along the main routes through Europe and their rapid charging speeds meant as long as everything worked, we'd only need to charge for half an hour each time before we could get back on the road. So if everything went to plan, then our theory was that driving through 13 countries should be possible in 23 hours and 10 minutes. Before we reveal what happened, if you want to see us do more trips like this and to watch all of our other new car reviews, subscribe to our channel and go to whatcar.com for a great deal on your next car. Okay, so now it's 4.03, we're in the Netherlands, but just passing into Belgium now. And hopefully in 24 hours time, we're gonna be very comfortably in Serbia, relaxing, everything will have gone well. So we started in the Netherlands, now we're in Belgium. What's next? Luxembourg next, then next. France. Or we get to France for the next charge. Correct. Stop. Okay. And that's where we charge. So we've got 229 kilometers to the charging station. Okay and 389 kilometers to go uh, of range remaining. So that should be fine. It should be fine. And we're in range mode as well. We're in range mode. We're driving we've... pretty normally motorway speeds. We're not gonna try and hypermile no. anything. And we've got AC on, yeah. but in eco mode. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? We've made it to France, but we have two problems. The first one was the traffic on the way here. It was pretty bad going into Luxembourg and then coming out of it again. So now it's 6.52 and we're about 20 minutes behind schedule. The next problem is that we've just plugged the Taycan in. Now the car should be able to accept 270 kilowatts of charge, but as you can see, unfortunately right now, it's only accepting 67 kilowatts. Now that is probably because we are at a supermarket charging stop and it's supermarket shopping time. So all these bays are busy. There's lots of people here charging, lots of energy being used. So that's probably reducing the speed that the Taycan can charge at. So what we're doing now is trying to work out what the minimum amount of charge is that we need to make it to the next stop, which is Germany. Okay, so it's 8.54 and we've now literally just crossed into Germany. We're crossing the Rhine now from France. So that's country number, Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France. Germany, five. Number five. Okay, great. And we left France on 75% of charge. Yeah. Now we're down to 34% of charge, but we're only 39 kilometers away from the next charger. So basically, the more miles or kilometers that we do in the Taycan, the more we realize that this range indicator is pretty accurate. Yeah. And we've done some of the longest journeys that we're gonna do on the trip already. So I'm becoming increasingly confident that if this fails horrifically, it's not gonna be because of the car. If something fails, this is my prediction, it's gonna be an Ionity charger somewhere or it'll be some border crossing. But hopefully we won't run out of charge anywhere. Now we're on an autobahn. Are we doing a top speed attempt? What is the top speed? I'm not sure, actually. Two, three, five. There's quite a lot of dead bugs on the windscreen now. Two, three, seven. Two, three, eight. Two, three. This well, feels two, two, like four, it's hit something yeah. that doesn't want to make it go any quicker. And we're still in range mode, so the 
wing style. Yeah. The range has taken quite a, a bit more of a hit there, but we are very close to the charger. Yeah. And we've, we've put, checked online and there should be chargers available. Yep. And there this should would, also be some food there. So yeah. that's fine. Okay. Uh, pre please use the card. Authent payment accepted. Okay. Another that's smooth good. process. So how long was that journey that we just did? So that was, we predicted yep. on Google Maps that that would take about two hours, 10 minutes. Okay. And we've just done it in one hour 49. Okay. So we've Great. actually taken 20 so minutes. Why, why don't we just do 150 miles an hour to Serbia? I would love to do that. But sadly, <laughs> that's not legal in okay. every country. But in Germany, 50. So the 20 minutes that we lost in Luxembourg traffic, we've got back. Effectively. And now yeah. this, we just need this to connect and start charging quickly. And then we're still yeah. on schedule, everything looking good. Yeah, fingers crossed. Obviously that last little blast has yeah. used a bit more range than we predicted. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So uh, it's working, there you go. Right, so it's on now, It's we're down to 23%. We are, whoa, we're charging at 190, wow. yeah. 200 kilowatt. That's accelerating as fast as the Taycan was on yeah. the Autobahn. That's, so the quickest, that's the quickest seen that we've before. seen it so far. And where, where are we going next? So next we're going to Switzerland. Okay. We're going to get a charge there, and yep. then it's our second largest stage. How many miles or kilometers? So the, so this one is not too big a leg. It's okay. the next one that's near enough 200. So okay, that's fine. going to be a worry. But if this is this quick, we might as well get almost a full charge here. Yeah, let's yeah. get some food. It is 3.42 a.m. We've just done a massive stint that was about three and a half hours. We're getting a quick charge now, and the next one's gonna be another three hours 50, I think. But then the good news is that after these, the final few trips are gonna be nice and short. So now we're in Italy, which is country number nine. So that means we've done the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, Germany, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Austria, and Italy. Here we are. While we've been charging here, we've got our fastest charging speed yet, which was 262 kilowatts. And the next destination we're headed to is Slovenia. So Doug did effectively the night shift and now I'm doing the morning shift. So it's currently 5.38 and the sun is just coming up and we are in Italy and it's very, very pretty. And the roads here have been fantastic. They've been lots of kind of hairpin turns and back and forth, um, which is good fun, but also we're quite tired at the moment. So Not great when you're trying to sleep in the back. I think. Not great when they're trying to sleep in the back. Yeah. I'm trying to be as smooth as I can. And we're also trying to keep our average speed up. Uh, but this is definitely the slowest section. Um, we charged in Italy to around about 97%, uh, which was like, I think about 380 kilometers is what it gave us. Um, we've still got two hours to go. 184 kilometers to go and we're showing 300 kilometers on the dashboard of remaining range so the car is still surprising us uh, with how efficient it is uh, at high cruising speeds so neil why are we doing this trip in a Taycan? well it's not just because this is a nice car to do the trip in it is a very nice car to do this trip in though it is a very nice car to do the trip in and that is part of it um you know, we've driven many Grand Tourers over the years and the defining features of a Grand Tourer are that they're quick, powerful, usually have a big petrol engine, but also a big petrol tank. So they can get you across the continent in comfort, in luxury, with minimal stress. And the Taycan is effectively a modern interpretation of a Grand Tourer. It's an electrified Grand Tourer. 
And we know from having driven the Taycan on lots of group tests in the past that it does the quick bit really well and it does the luxurious, comfortable bit well. But what we don't know is what it's actually like to drive it across Europe. Can it do the big miles? Does it have the range to do that? And does it have the quick charging capability to take the stress out of doing big miles? So that's why we chose this to do the trip and see how it gets on. But yeah, so another two hours to go. And morale is high. And morale oh, is whoa, high. Whoa, yes. Woo, woo, come on. So now we're waiting for a charge, we can tell you a bit more about the Taycan that we have on this test. So, Neil, what exact version are we driving today? So, Porsche are known for not liking the words entry level, but that's effectively what this is. If you go into your Porsche dealer and say, I want a base Taycan, this is what you would get. So it's rear wheel drive, okay. unlike the 4S and every other model above it. Yep. And you also get, sounds impressive, a performance battery. Yeah. So it's 71 kilowatt hours, which is decent, but we would advise you go for the option that is on this car, which is the performance battery plus. Yeah. And that increases the size of the battery to 83.7 kilowatt hours usable. And that gets you two things really. One, gets you a longer range, yeah. goes up from somewhere in the high 270s to 314. Mm -hmm. And it also means you can charge it quicker. So the standard car, you can only charge up to 225 kilowatts. Yeah, which is fairly quick. Which still. is fairly quick by the standards of every other electric car on yeah. sale. But by going for the Performance Battery Plus, yeah. you can charge it up to 270. Great. And that's important because when you consider that we're at 350 kilowatt charges, yeah. then you can make use of that. Yeah. And although there's not that many really, really fast chargers around in the UK, there's going to be more and more in the future. Absolutely. So the faster they get, the more common they are, the more grateful you'll be to be able to charge at a faster speed, totally. as well as having the extra range in the first place with that battery. Absolutely. Okay. So then the question is, what does this entry level model cost um, with no options? So as standard. So with no options, you go in, I want the standard car, yeah. give it to me around about £75,000. £75,000. But this one's quite a bit more expensive than that, right? This one is. This is 86 as it sits here. £86,000 yeah. with options. Okay, so we've already said it's got the Performance Battery Plus, which, which is, is about £4,000. £4,000 roughly. What else have we got on the car? So you've got a few things. Some are noticeable, some not. So pretty noticeable. The paint. Sure. Frozen Berry Metallic. That's around about £800. Pounds. Okay. Um, maybe 774 I think. Yep. Um, but if you come closer, you'll see here, the Taycan badge is yep. in the same color as the car. That there, around about 170 pounds for that. And in fact, mentioning that, even this, this window strip round here, that's optional. And we have actually got different wheels from the standard car. Yeah, well, that's right? a good point. So standard car comes with 19 inch wheels. These are 20. They're a little bit more aerodynamic than the base wheels. Okay. So, you know, that might net you one kilometer per every hey, 300. On a trip like this, every kilometer We need every counts, bit we can yeah. get. Um, but yeah, I like those. I think they're very nice. Cool. Um, other noticeable options. The interior is purple, which is an interesting choice. Well, it's a very eye-catching color scheme generally, isn't it? So yeah. pink on the outside, purple on the inside. Yeah. Or it's Blackberry, right? Blackberry, Blackberry is Blackberry what they would want you to call it. Premium leather. Yeah. Very and nice. On top of that, again, you might not notice it straight away, but on the inside of the door here, like somewhere you wouldn't really see, that's also leather on top here top of the dashboard, leather. So it's also an extended leather pack. That's about two and a half thousand pounds. We'll let you decide if that's worth it. Sure. The other thing in, that we've got inside oh, as yes. well is a Sport Chrono pack, is that right? So Yeah, so again, you might not notice that straight away, but if you look on the top of the dashboard, it's the same on all 911s as well. Yeah. You can option the Sport Chrono pack, get you that lovely clock, digital for the actual clock, but you've got the seconds going around there and that also acts as a lap timer. Not sure when you're gonna be probably not on, this trip. Yeah. not on this trip. Uh, and you also get my favorite thing, which is a drive mode selector, which means you don't have to go through the infotainment system. You can just go on there and select whatever mode you want. So then the question is, with all the options that we've got, we've said that the one crucial one that you should definitely go for is the Performance Battery Plus to yeah. get the extra range and faster charging. But if you, Neil, could only have one other option that we've got on this car, what would you keep? I think I'd actually go for the frozen berry paint. How I, about you? I would have the blackberry interior, to be honest. So 
you can you can look cool on the outside fair enough but i want some interest and luxury on the inside i think yeah i think that's and fair i'd go for that absolutely yeah It's 9.27 and we are now in Slovenia. And the reason that I was nervous about the whole of this trip is because the experience of charging an electric car using the public charging infrastructure in the UK over the last few years has been pretty inconsistent to say the least. So quite often chargers are difficult to find. They don't charge as fast as they should or they charge slowly anyway. They're broken and and what you're seeing more and more now is that because EVs are becoming so popular and the charging infrastructure isn't growing at the same rate to match the number of EVs on the road, there's now more and more queues to wait and then charge up your EV at a charging station. So because of all those terrible experiences that I've had and other colleagues have had and other EV owners in the UK have had in the last few years, I never thought that a trip like this doing a ludicrous amount of miles and requiring a ludicrous amount of stops would ever go smoothly. But right now, we are going to comfortably make 13 countries. No question. We're gonna absolutely smash that before 4 p.m. So what we're trying to work out now is whether we wanna make it 14 countries by going into Hungary. In the end, we did go to Hungary, but things weren't quite as smooth as we would have liked. The border crossing was painfully slow and ate into a lot of the time we had left, but we eventually got through to country number 12 and instantly did a U-turn to go back into Croatia to charge up and then start a one hour, 40 minute drive to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Okay, so we've had a stressful couple of hours um, after being a little bit delayed in Hungary. We've now, finally completed 13 countries. We've just been over the border into Bosnia and at least that was fairly smooth. Um, and that is a unofficial record in an EV as far as we're aware. So we've done what we came here to do, which is amazing. Um, but now just to add a little bit of drama <laughs> into the mix, um, we are now heading for the Serbian border and we've dropped a pin which is a little bit short of the border, but it's telling us we should get there at about 3.45. And we basically need to get there before 4.03. That's our cutoff. That'll be 24 hours at 4.03. And we'll have done, if we can get under that, we'll have done 14 countries. How much range have we got left? Yeah, that's the other problem. So it's... Oh God about 100 kilometers to the Serbian border and we've got 124 kilometers left. And there's not a charging point like directly where we're finishing? There is no Ionity charging point near to where we're finishing. So we're literally, we're just going to collapse over the finish line and then worry about the rest of it then? Well, yeah, we might have to be towed back to our hotel. So I can't quite believe it, but we are actually about 10 minutes away from the Serbian border and it is 3.31, which gives us around about, yeah, half an hour uh, since we started at 4.03 p.m. yesterday uh, to get across the border, which would give us 14 countries in 24 hours. Uh, the only slight problem is um, I have had to turn off the AC. I think we would have made it with the AC, but uh, we want to be super careful. But as I mentioned earlier, it's uh, it's 37 degrees, so we're a little bit hot. So I do feel really bad for anybody watching uh, the sweat. Neil, just... can you just put the window down? Uh, no. No, just one one final hit before the border. All right. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Ready. Oh, God. <laughs> That's That's so good. So good. Oh my so god, good. that is just so good. Oh. Look, at, right. look <laughs> at this. Look at this sweat dripping down the door. It's really bad. Oh it's my It's really god. bad. Oh god, this is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh god. Right, so we've got hopefully the passports out for the penultimate time. 
Uh, we are currently at the Croatian side of the border. So we've got to get through here and then we've got the Serbian passport control. And then hopefully if we can get through these two in 20 minutes, we'll have done 14 countries in 24 hours. I should, I should keep my hands on the wheel. We should sing the Serbian national anthem, yeah. I think. So I should just say, that's it. We've made it through. Uh, we got through in 10 minutes. We're, we had 20 minutes to spare. We got through in 10 minutes. So we did it with, yeah, 10 minutes to spare till 4.03. 14 countries. I don't know how we've done that because on paper, when I was planning this, it just did not seem possible. I didn't even plan for 14 until we got to one of those final charging stops and we thought yeah. we should have a crack at it. And I mean, it. I thought 13 was never going to work from the outset anyway, yeah. so. I, yeah. I thought we could do it, but I thought everything would have to go right. And everything has Which it did. more or less gone right, apart from that hungry crossing. So yeah. yeah, amazing. We have matched the motorcycle record, which is phenomenal in a, an EV. So yeah, I would say, you know, the Taycan, yeah, it's proper Grand Tour. Well yeah. done us. Well Aren't done we us. <laughs> Another round of applause, I think, for just Woo! how great we are. Woo! So we did it, 14 countries in 24 hours. Now it's a couple of days later, we're at a service station somewhere in France on our return journey back to the UK, which we very sensibly split over slightly longer than 24 hours. And now we're just gonna run through some of the numbers that we have for the trip. So starting off, how many countries did we go through? We wanted to do 13, we managed to do 14. And how long did it take us to go through those countries? 23 hours, 50 minutes, quite amazing. And what was the total distance that we covered in those 23 hours, 50 minutes? We did about 1,199 miles. That's pretty far. In 24 hours. Yeah. And what was the top speed that we recorded? So, we never thought we were gonna hit the top speed on this run. We sure. thought this would be effectively economy run. So, Porsche say the car will do 143 miles an hour and you managed somehow 148 on the Autobahn. This guy. Right here. Absolutely. And also, just to point out, that's with four people in the car, obviously very slim athletes of course. in the car, and the car couldn't have been more full. The totally. front boot couldn't have had anything else in it. Yeah. The rear boot was completely packed as Absolutely well. Absolutely packed to the brim. And over those miles, what was our average speed? Average speed doesn't sound amazing, but you've got to remember it's in the context of 24 hours, yeah. including that jam you mentioned in Luxembourg, struggling to get through the Hungarian border where yeah. we left the trip computer running. So the average speed was around about 100 kilometers an hour. Which is 60-ish miles 60 an hour. 60-ish miles an hour. What was the longest journey from one charger to another? So we kind of probably share that a little bit, that record, because we did a back-to-back. -back. So you did 200 miles in the night, yep. I did 200 miles in the night. And they were pretty crucial stages, weren't they? Looking Massively. back on it. Because um, we've gone through both of those stages on this return journey, which has obviously taken much longer because we spread it over a couple of days. Yeah. And we did them during the day when there was a lot of traffic. Yeah. And we were really quite slow. Totally. But fortunately doing them at night, yes, they were long, they were pretty difficult, but there was nothing on the road. So they went very smoothly. And if we'd have done Absolutely. that at a different time, we would have been slower, wouldn't we? Yeah, we found that. I mean, I'd budgeted for our run from Italy yeah. all the way to Slovenia through the Dolomites we thought that would take around about four hours. Yeah. In the end, we managed to cut, you know, 50 minutes off that. And that wasn't through particularly driving much quicker than we thought we would. It's just there was no traffic on yeah. the roads. What was the slowest charging speed that we recorded? So the slowest charging speed, uh, it was high 60s. And it should have been 270 kilowatts, which the car was capable of. And that slow charging speed was at a supermarket car park, at supermarket shopping time. All the other charges were taken, so that was probably to be expected. And then what was the fastest charging speed we recorded? 262 kilowatts. And actually on the charger, there was no one around. It was in the middle of the night. We were the only people using that charger. And actually on the way here, we recorded 264 kilowatts. And again, no one else was around. We were the only ones on it. So what else have we learned from this trip? So I think one of the really crucial things I've learned on this trip, and I think we all have, is you want a car that's going to give you an accurate range readout depending on what you're doing. You don't want to start the car, 
see that you've got 200 miles of range because then when you get on the motorway and it drops instantly to 120, you have that doubt, am I going to get to mm. where I want to go? And we found that with a lot of electric cars over the years. The Taycan, every time we've turned on, it seems to have learned the kind of speeds we've been doing. And it gives us an incredibly accurate readout of the miles we're going to do and if we're going to get there. Yeah. And then to back that up, what you also need to know is when you get to your destination, that the charge is going to be quick enough, it's going to be free, that there's enough of them and that they're not broken. And if you have those things, I think you have confidence in your ability to go long distance. Sure, but I guess because of how specific and slightly odd our trip is, we aren't at the stage where we can say anyone can buy an electric car and do a massive journey across Europe without having any stress at all. No, that is a good point. We're definitely a long way off from an electric road trip being the same or equivalent to a petrol or diesel road trip. Because let's face it, you could, could get in a BMW 5 Series at Folkestone, put Serbia in your nav, and you know there's gonna be a petrol or diesel filling station along your route the whole way. You can just peel off, not a problem. If we'd started in Folkestone in the Taycan, plugged Serbia into the sat nav, and we had to rely on Shell, BP Pulse, or whatever is in the country we've been passing through, I think we'd have had a lot harder time, mm. and we certainly wouldn't have done it in that distance. So yeah. definitely, there is a bit of pre-planning that has to go into it if you're gonna do a journey in Europe. The question is, would you have rather done this trip in a petrol-powered Grand Tour? I think before we started, hand on heart, I would have probably preferred to do it in any petrol powered car on sale today than do it in an electric car, even that Taycan over there. But now that we've done it in the Taycan? It really has gone so well <laughs> that it's reframed my perspective. And the journey was such a long one that those built-in stops were genuinely useful. We obviously yeah. needed comfort breaks and food and there were good chances to just relax and get out of the car. Yeah. They were absolutely crucial. And we were stopping for about half an hour, 40 minutes. Sometimes just under 30 minutes. Yeah. Sometimes a little bit over. Yeah, yeah. And the cost of all this? Well, Ionity is one of the most expensive public charging networks around but Taycan owners have a discounted rate for the first three years of ownership, meaning it's 30p per kilowatt hour to charge up. So the 391 kilowatt hours it took to complete our journey cost 117 pounds. If you don't own a Taycan and pay the full 69p per kilowatt hour, then you'd be forking out 270 pounds. So what we've shown is that, yes, it is possible to do a crazy mega mile trip in an 86,000 pound electric car using a quick but expensive charging network. Grand Tourers will live long into the electric future. What we need to see now is many more chargers in many more locations, all offering rapid charging speeds and rock solid reliability, along with a broader choice of long range electric cars for all budgets. We're not there yet, but our road trip shows that we are well on the way to stress-free cross-continental holidays in regular electric cars. Thanks for watching and before you go, subscribe to our channel and tell us in the comments below what EV challenges you'd like to see us do next. And don't forget, if you're looking for a new car, then go to whatcar.com for a great deal.